Hello and welcome to Team Atlantic channel. Today we are reviewing an unusual power supply. Unboxing the new power supply. The packaging is very nice. And this power supply is unusual. It consists of two parts, the control display unit and the power unit. In appearance, the power unit itself looks very much like a smartphone adapter, only larger. The manufacturer claims it delivers 30 volts and up to 5 amps at the output, that's 150 watts. And here we see just 100 watts, so we won't actually get 30 volts and 5 amps. Miracles don't happen. Well, let's see. Plugging the adapter into the mains and turning on the device. The screen is beautiful and elegant. There are five control buttons and one side encoder. But the controls are not simple. To select a value, you need to move the marker to the desired level. It's not the most convenient control method. The menu includes various settings, including a screen with the manufacturer's logo. It is impossible to set 30 volts and 5 amps. The input from the adapter is only 20 volts, and under load even less. Well, that's obvious since the external adapter is only rated at 100 watts. As a result, this power supply unit provides a maximum of 18 volts at the output. For our work, that's critical. When repairing LEDs or blinds motors, we need at least 24 volts. Let's see what current this mini power supply can deliver. We'll connect the 3715 electronic load. We have already talked about using this load in one of our previous videos. The link will be at the top and in the description below. We connect and turn on the output of the mini power supply. The backlighting of the output terminals looks very nice. The indicator shows nearly 5 amps and the input of the electronic load shows the same. The small difference is insignificant, it's just voltage drop across the wires. First impression, a very stable output current. Let's test how the mini power supply operates in current limiting mode. We'll set the limit to 4.1 amps and on the electronic load we'll gradually increase the current starting from 3 amps. Once it exceeds 4.1 amps, the mini power supply switches to CC constant current mode. Excellent! Let's see how the components of our mini power supply heat up. We'll do this using a thermal camera. From the captured images, it's clear that the temperature is generally not critical. It stays within 48 degrees Celsius or 118 degrees Fahrenheit. That's actually quite good. The next test is for reliability, a burning or stress test. Here's how we do it. We set the maximum voltage and current values in our case, that's nearly 19 volts and almost 5 amps. We turn it on and leave it running for an extended period. After an hour or two, we check the results. If everything is stable, the test is considered successful. But what about this unit? What do we see after just a few minutes? The power supply shuts down on its own, then turns back on and shuts down again. That's definitely not good. Let's sum up our brief review of the mini power supply. It has a great design and compact size, but the claimed 30 volts are not available at the output. Apparently, a different adapter is needed. The parameter control isn't the most user-friendly. But the most disappointing part is that it's practically useless for long-term operation. It shuts down on its own. In our test, the mean time to failure was less than half an hour. And it doesn't really matter whether the issue is due to the adapter overheating or bad cable contacts. Maybe your experience with this power supply has been different and everything works fine. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below this video. 
Thank you for watching the video. We hope this video was useful to you. Please don't forget to like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the bell so you don't miss our next videos. Bye-bye and see you soon.